Hello everyone and welcome again to the second chapter of Asia in the Limelight. It's a pleasure to see you for the second day of our event. For those of you who have just joined us, this Just Focus on Asian Markets is taking place as part of a series of online events called From Home Export Days, organized by Le Bureau Export, the French Music Export Office. If you're curious about yesterday market presentations about China, South Korea and Japan, you can check out the replay on our YouTube or Facebook channel. And please stay with us until tomorrow for the showcases of Paul Jarre, Anne Paseo and Vincent Perani. They will be presented during the Korean Jazz Festival Jara Zoom and broadcast on their YouTube channel and on What the France, the music recommendation brand created by Le Bureau Export. Many thanks again to the Jara Zoom Jazz Festival and Jazz Sous les Pommiers, as well as the French embassies in Singapore, South Korea, Japan and China, with whom we have set up this online event. Today's panel is called How to E-Connect with Asia. It is moderated by Eric Zhao, lawyer of copyright law in China, vice president of JZ Music and part-time jazz musician. Thank you very much for joining us and take it away, Eric. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm your moderator, I'm your host. Eric Zhao. I'm from China. I'm a lawyer, focused on music, copyright, and I'm also the legal consultant for Jay-Z Music, which is a jazz label in China. So um, I usually, I'm a player in a debate, but today is not a debate. It's more like uh, introduce for providing some information to our uh, French, French, and uh, I would like to introduce our big brother, JJ. Uh, he is the, maybe we can say the godfather in jazz music in South Korea. Uh, hello, JJ. Uh, maybe uh, you are busy with uh, the festival recent days and can you tell me or tell us something about your examples like collaboration with French musicians or French labels in uh, music area? Thanks. Uh, yes. Uh, hello, hello, everybody. So I'm really happy to see you on the on this conference and. Um, Actually, so I, I cannot be called the uh, godfather of the, the Asian jazz because I'm I'm still young. <laughs> yeah. I'm still young, and um, yes, uh, um, uh, let me let me shortly introduce myself. Actually, uh, well, my my full name is J J uh, In, but everybody just calls me J J, and um, I'm a I'm a founder of the uh, Charasum Jazz Festival, which is, uh, 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 which is starts uh, 2004. That means in this year, we have a uh, 17th edition of the festival. And um, yes, uh, I have uh, uh, the, my festival, uh, unfortunately in this year, some of the, uh, my festival is still uh, going on through the online only uh, from 9th uh, October to 25th of this month. So I'm so, so sorry for that, but actually the, but, but it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah, I'm, I, I think it's okay because um, uh, the most of the, 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 the festival or the venue is, is, is struggling to survive from these pandemic situations. Uh, and, um, Yes, but French, uh, French music and French jazz has a very special meaning to me because, uh, uh, well, I remember around 20 years ago, I was first time I was invited by the French embassy to look around the, the French uh, uh, music festivals, and uh, uh, that that was my first uh, first experience to look around the international music festivals in abroad. So after that, I, I I can wake up uh, I can wake up my eyes to the the festivals and then uh, that's why I really uh, have uh, really appreciate the 
the, the French music and French musicians, even the, the effort from the uh, music export. So, uh, so that's why that, that's why we have a very long uh, collaboration histories with the French musicians and um, especially to, uh, especially four years ago, the 2016. So the, there was a very big uh, uh, exchange programs between Korea and uh, France yeah, to memory of the, the 130 years of diplomatic relationships. So we had a very big uh, cultural exchange programs and uh, the time um, we uh, my festival has uh, the, uh, focused on the France uh, French music and we invited around five bands from France and uh, we uh, I brought uh, some uh, four or so, I cannot remember exactly but uh, around four bands I brought them to the France especially we have a very good uh, uh, relationships with the jazz Le Pommier, the the, the uh, quite uh, uh, I think it's really nice jazz festival in France. So we made a very good collaborations. And um, and uh, beside that, uh, I'm trying to to program some of the uh, uh, the French musicians in my festival every year. But um, last year was not so good. But anyway, uh, would, uh, I nearly try to open my 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 uh, gate to festival doors to the French musicians. Okay. Okay. Thanks, JJ. And we have uh, Mr. Kitagawa, and Mr. Kitagawa is the senior producer and program for Tokyo Jazz Plus. And can you give us some cases for uh, Japan and uh, France for in? jazz music area. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, it's very uh, nice to meet you all online. Um, just like Eric introduced um, uh, JJ, uh, my former colleague Atsuko was telling uh, me about uh, JJ. And she also said that you are the godfather of jazz in Asia. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, just like um, Jerusalem uh, Jazz Festival, like uh, Tokyo Jazz started in 2002, so which marks a 20th uh, anniversary edition uh, next year. And so, and Asko told us uh, that um, Jerusalem Festival had many times helped our uh, uh, festival in programming and so on. And um, I'm quite new. I, I'm quite new to the festival. Like I, I'm only involved in the past uh, few years. Um, but um, um, our festival also uh, started the, the relationship with uh, French artists, uh, which dates back in 2008, I think, which uh, also was the year to commemorate 150th uh, French-Japanese uh, relationship. So um, JJ just said like uh, it was like 20, 230 uh, years of relationship in Korea. Yes, right, 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 right. So, so Korea has much longer uh, relationship, I guess. But um, yeah, we started in 2008. And since then, uh, we had a, uh, uh, what's called the program uh, French Jazz Quota. And in which we invited uh, French artists, sometimes not French, but uh, French related artists. So that's how we started the um, some kind of collaboration or exchange with uh, France or Europe as a whole. And in recent years, uh, we had a proposal from a uh, 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 French jazz festival called Jazz à Vienne um, in 2014. It took time to prepare, but in 2016, we exchanged artists. Uh, we sent over Japanese band called Triforth, and we invited a French artist called uh, EY, EYM Trio. And also this year, we did the collaboration again. Um, this year, we were planning to have an actual uh, festival in May, but because of the COVID-19, we had to switch to make it an um, online festival. And we, uh, we organized everything in one month, which was uh, totally crazy. 
But um, um, luckily, uh, we were able to get lots of help, uh, including uh, France and Europe. And we were able to do some kind of collaborative uh, project uh, again with uh, Jazza Vienne. Um, we invited again uh, Triforth, and this time uh, we uh, we had an artist, a China Moses, uh, from France. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Xinji. And we have Andy Yan today. Uh, Andy Yan is the CEO of Lutz Entertainment, um, and he has a lot of experiences with collaboration with French company and the French musician. So can you give us some uh, your thought or some cases with uh, cooperation with French company and artist? Okay, thank you, Eric. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Andy from Let's Entertainment uh, in Shanghai, China. Uh, thank you very much for having me here. So I have the opportunity to talk with uh, all the professions. So first, let me introduce our company briefly. Uh, Let's Entertainment is a music uh, uh, entertainment company based in Shanghai, China since 2009. Uh, we work with both local artists and foreign artists and the labels of uh, various music styles. Uh, our business is managing artists, promoting shows and uh, distributing music. Uh, we have four music labels under our company, uh, focusing on different music styles, and we working. We are working with over twenty music groups and uh, produced over fifty albums uh, over the past few years. And we have uh, distributed over sixty thousand tracks in China mainland for both local and foreign musicians, and our uh, digital distribution system. Uh, is online this year, but it's, it's only in Chi Chinese. Uh, we will have multi-language version next year. And uh, we also uh, promoted uh, lots of shows for uh, French musicians in China with the uh, support of uh, French Institute in China, such as uh, M, I M, College, Analog, Superpose, uh, Pony Pony Run Run, and et cetera. So we would like to take this opportunities opportunities to work with more French labels or artists for digital distribution and online promotion in China. As now we cannot promote foreign artists uh, live shows here. So I will give some examples of uh, uh, the collaborations between our artists and the French musicians. So though we are not only focusing on jazz music, we work with uh, a French jazz musician uh, named Laurent, Laurent Couzon. He's a pianist, singer, and a movie composer. Uh, in 20, uh, 2013 to 2014. So we promoted his shows in Shanghai with support of Aliens, Aliens of uh, Francis. And the show was quite successful and got a lot of uh, media exposure. And we introduced our artist, Hama, to, to Lauren Kuzon, and they work on one track together, and uh, it was released both in China and uh, Europe. And also, besides uh, Lauren Kuzon, we also introduced our artist, Hama, to college uh, electric musician. They work on a track named Love Peace together, and this track was used in uh, Netflix movie uh, movie trailer named uh, Tiger Tail this year. And uh, now we are working with another jazz musician, a French jazz musician named Ray Lemar. So we are pre pre uh, preparing his uh, albums to distribute in China pretty soon. Yes, thank you, Eric. Okay, uh, we have just finished uh, the routine session. So maybe next is the improvised session. Uh, I think less, uh, just now is too formal. Uh, and But we have some topics to talk about, uh, like seven topics. So I will follow the topics and you can answer the the topics, uh, whatever you want to talk 
with which angle uh, you can just improvise on it. Yeah. Uh, the first topic is about promotion of jazz music. Um, based on your experience, what is the best way to uh, for an international jazz musician or artist to uh, be popular or to reach in your local media? Uh, like we have different media uh, street platform in our three countries. So maybe we'll just start with JJ. Uh, is it, uh, uh, well, I think about the promotion is really, uh, really, um, uh, it actually depends on the countries, uh, the situation. I mean, the video situation is uh, uh, changed very rapidly. So, uh, but uh, but first, I uh, I like to recommend uh, the first thing that I like to recommend is the most of the jazz musicians. I mean, the, uh, the, the jazz musicians they really really want to uh, perform the the. The shows they want to do the concert to uh, the, the the gigs in in some foreign countries, uh, but um, well sometimes uh, for the jazz musicians gig is more important than the the CD than than the the the, the, uh, the streaming or the, I I can I can say that CD yeah. But uh, without the, the CD releasing in the foreign countries, actually to, to get just to, uh, if the musician just want to get the gigs, I think it's a little bit, um, um, well, how to say, it's um, not a good way. Yeah, it, it's a kind of a, the, the, uh, yeah, yes, I can say first, the, the CD releasing is the first options, and second one is the uh, uh, gigs. But uh, 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 but jazz musicians doesn't pay attention to the CD releasing in the in the foreign territories. Yeah. So uh, first one, I like to recommend the CD or the the, the promotions from the the, the CD, and uh, and about the media exposures. Oh well, the the comparable ways, uh, but um, the best way is to use the, the the part of the the festival or the uh, uh, the season program of the some good venue. Uh, it, it would be a really nice way to expose you uh, themselves in in the the, uh, the main uh, press media. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. I have a question. Um, I just wondering, uh, music listener, they use still use CD to listen to the music. Uh, most no, of them. No, no, they yeah. don't. They don't. They don't listen to the CD. Even they don't have the CD player. Even they don't. Yeah, they, yeah. They because I don't have a CD player right now. Yeah, I just can't. You know, even my the car. Young, yeah, even the young Only generation, way. they have never seen the C hand CD player. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they yeah. don't know how to yeah. Uh, yeah. play the CD. Yeah, yeah then, what is yeah, disconnect? Yeah, yes, that's the why I I just said that the CD, which includes all kind of uh, uh, data, music data. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, so let's talk about promotion, Shinji. Um, promotion. Um, you, you also mentioned about media exposure. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, um, yeah, um, for us as Tokyo Jazz uh, Plus, um, the main organizer is uh, we have the organizing committee, which consists of uh, the, the newspaper company called Nikkei and NHK and us, NHK Enterprises. Um, NHK is like what BBC is for the UK. It's a public broadcaster. So for every past edition, we broadcasted the whole festival, now, not the whole, but some segments of fe uh, festival on TV as well as NHK radio. So um, 
one thing that we could provide was uh, exposure on those media. But um, and at Tokyo Jazz, like uh, the program that I'm in charge of is uh, outdoor venue in which we usually invite like young emerging artists. Uh, most of them are from Japan, but uh, some come from Europe or other countries. And so for those bands, especially those uh, young and emerging uh, artists, I think festival can uh, function as a gateway for you know, Japanese audience, Japanese fans, and Japanese uh, music professionals. And so, um, yeah, that's, I, I, I think it's important to create some kind of a hub for the people to get to know the musicians that they didn't know about. And um, not just inviting artists to Japan, if possible, what I try every time is to uh, create a network with other organizations or venues or festivals in Japan. And if possible, uh, we'd like to create more networks with neighboring countries like China, Korea, so that uh, we can expand the possibility of exposures of our inviting artists in Japan as well as um, uh, neighboring countries, I think. So one exa one easy example is try to create a tour for the band that we invite in conjunction with our festival, which is sometimes very uh, difficult to do um, considering the visa issues, uh, past, things like that. But we try to create uh, some path to, you know, organically uh, create good exposure, uh, you know, like a synergy, yeah. Okay, thanks. Um, is there still a visa problem with foreign band performs in Japan? Oh, I think it's only the um, one restriction in China. <laughs> Sorry. Um, there are many like uh, rules that we need to um, clear with uh, in turn uh, when we, you know issue the the artist visa to perform in japan okay do you have to uh, uh apply for uh uh okay permission for it for yes, performance yeah. okay okay yeah. got it okay thanks um so andy let's talk about promotion in china yeah yeah i want to talk a little bit about the streaming platforms. So since the uh, music platforms in China are totally different, like we, we, we cannot use Spotify or YouTube. So we have a totally different system inside China. So we have uh, TME, which contains QQ Music, Cool Go, and Cool One Music, and NetEase Music. Though uh, these are the most powerful local DSPs here, uh, which they can cover over 90% of all the users in China. And on these uh, music platforms, the playlist is becoming more and more important for promotion. Pro promotion. Um, so together with the uh, French in Institute in China, we are now working with uh, the Bujo Expo for running uh, what the France playlist in China on that is. So we together we will select the suitable themes of each uh, playlist uh, according to different timing. Uh, for example, before uh, China national holiday, we released the, the road trip in France playlist, uh, which has been played over one thousand and uh, no one hundred and ten thousand times during the holiday. So I think uh, playlist is uh, very. Uh, very efficient for promotion, uh, both for music and for the musicians. Yes, Eric. Okay, Andy, um, you mentioned about the distribution uh, or the stream platform. Uh, they are doing the distributor as the distributor same time. So um, if a French jazz company, they want to distribute their music in China. So how can I do it? Okay, uh, I think basically uh, now most of the international digital dis 
distributor, they can provide a service uh, inside China, for example, like uh, Bleef uh, from France. Uh, but uh, also we are doing the uh, digital distribution for for the worldwide musicians from, from all over the country. So uh, the big difference is that uh, now we are the local distributor, so we are more efficient uh, to deal with the local DSPs. Uh, we have all the frame contract with the TME or Ali Music or NetEase Music. So uh, normally the music will be online in three to five days when we receive all the necessary materials and uh, we will provide the uh, streaming data every six months and uh, pay the loyalty once a year. So that's what we are doing right now for the foreign artist uh, distribution in China. Okay, still relating to the uh, digital platform yes. with the big companies, right? Yeah, yes. okay. Mm -hmm. um, my personally, I'm very curious about the distribution in Japan. Um, because I'm a big fan of uh, jazz music and jazz funk, and I'm I love to collecting vinyls, and I know a lot of real goods in Japan uh, record stores. I've been there a lot of times to buy a lot of vinyls, and I know a lot of Japanese uh, uh, listeners or music fans, they still buy vinyls today. Yeah, and a lot. So mm. uh, can you introduce the market distribution market for us in Japan? Yeah, I'm not the best person to answer the question. <laughs> I don't know much about it. <laughs> um, yeah, about distribution, um, like you said, I think, um, you know, Japan has a um, unique culture. Uh, still, like vinyl is very, uh, you know, popular. And jazz in Japan in 50s, 60s, like um, there's this culture of uh, jazz cafe, uh, jazz kissa, uh, what's called in Japan. And so people are used to uh, going to jazz cafe to go uh, listen to jazz rather than going to uh, clubs and uh at the the venues so i i'm sure that you, uh, we have a very unique uh culture developed in terms of that but um yeah distribution i, I i'm sorry like i don't um uh, much to answer to that um but um yeah as a festival organizer like what i can say is like once you get to know some um you know distributors or music professionals uh once you have a bond relationship like you will constantly get the information, you know, new information. So what I what I say is um, the jazz industry in Japan is niche, but diverse and very broad. So I, I would suggest that you you develop some personal like relationship with those um, the professionals, I think. Okay, thank you anyway. Okay. Um, JJ, here's the question for you uh, from our audience. Uh, and say hello, JJ. When you say CD is important, do you mean a CD recorded in China or whatever CD, uh, even recorded somewhere else in the past? Yeah, maybe he's saying the old CD is very popular in Korea. Uh. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, actually, the CD means not a physical CD. I mean, the, the, uh, I, the, I, I cannot remember the, the streaming. So that's why I use okay. the word the CD. CD is yeah, 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 yeah. in digital form. form. Okay, okay. Streaming. Yes, yes right. Only L LP yeah, LP is very big. Yeah, okay. Now in Korea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. I know. Uh, the music fans, they can use Spotify in Korea, but I know a lot of other platforms in Korea, like Melon, maybe, yeah, uh, and uh, maybe 
the Korea market is very different from China and uh, Japan because uh, in Korea we have some pop biggest uh, music entertainment company like uh, yeah like JYP like SM so can you give us some clue for distribution but we, we are just talking about jazz music in Korea yeah, but actually, I'm the same situation with the Shinji because I'm not the right person to talk about the, okay. the distributions. But um, everybody think uh, everybody knows the the BTS, so that's why yeah, the, BTS, Pink, that's why Black have, Pink. Yes, that's why yeah. we have the special platforms. But uh, well, as you said, the Melon is uh, the one of the biggest um, platform for the streamings. But you know, the, I'm not the I don't have any ID for the Melon. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so can you give us more information about the copyright environment, uh, maybe publishing or something you want to say or you want, want to share about the laws and the copyright? JJ. Me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Let's start from the big brother. <laughs> no, 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 no. Actually, so I, I, I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert for the copyright and, um, yeah. The, the, yeah. So, well, I, I, I can say I just do, I, I just do try to my best to, to keep the, the, the uh, copyright and I'm trying to pay the royalties. And that's what I can say. <laughs> okay. Uh, did it work well with the uh, um, royalty collecting society in Korea? Ah. Yes, we have some. Ah. Yes, uh, several the uh, royalty collecting committees in Korea. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Did it work well, or did? People yeah, blame. I, yes, I, I yeah. think they were. Yes, I think they work well for the local musicians, for the Korean musicians. Okay. But I, I don't have any good. I don't know uh, about the, the relationships with the Sasem or Kema. Yeah. Yes, I yeah. don't know. How they were. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, but I don't. I don't believe it works well. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a complex, complicated issue yeah yeah so we have some other topics and we have uh, uh for the can audience I, can i say can. something yeah yeah of course yeah please i'm sorry can i say something about copyright like i'm definitely not uh expert in copyright either and i try not to you know yeah, we, we, we make sure to pay the loyalty to what's called jazz rock and all that. And we, when we make contracts with artists, we usually try to have like five years of like broadcasting rights, uh, things like that, very like, you know, detailed uh, contracts. But um, uh -huh. to put it easily, like we, um, as a default, uh, we try to make a five year contract so that we can uh do promotion in in five years in japan but this year you know like uh this was the first time for us to do um the live stream online which stream not just in japan but also other parts of world and okay. we have learned I'm, I'm sure the viewers know more a lot more than we do but uh, like this was a lesson that like you know like we needed to clear like a synchronization synchronization rights and you know we needed to contact original publisher so live stream is easier uh, compared to you know the the archived footage that oh, yeah. that we want to keep after we finish the online streaming but like you know that process was very new uh, uh, procedure for us to take, and we we learned a lot. And yeah, I, I'm sure I, I I brought it up because uh, I'm sure like many of us will all need to deal with that from now on. 
。OK， 嗯、um, ，Let's see. Actually, I have a a question from myself. Um,、uh, because I studied music copyright and I pay a lot of spare a lot of time on it. Um. I have a friend from Universal China, and we we just want to get some license from、uh, there from them because a lot of jazz music the copyright is belongs to Universal. They just bought a lot of labels in、um, in US, so maybe all the songs or we can say ninety percent of the songs in real books are belongs to Universal. And they gave us a very expensive price for cover a song or re-recorded. So, did it happen in Japan or Korea? If we want to record a song in real book, well, we can say it's standard jazz. Yeah, it's it's the copyright belongs to Universal or Sony. Is the price is very. Expensive, or just we have other way to resolve the copyright issues. Please go ahead,、um, Godfather. <laughs> Hey, did you follow my question, JJ? I'm just. I I don't. Ah,、uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Ah,、uh, I mean, a lot of classical songs in jazz, they are uh, uh, the copyright of these songs. The maybe they are, they are in in the real book. What we call the real book standard jazz music. The the copyright belongs to some big. Companies、yeah. like Universal, yeah. If we want to record like、uh, my funny Valentine in China, we have to、uh, get a license from Universal, and the price is very expensive because we don't have a good society or organization to let this thing、uh, move on very success successfully. So. If we want to record some standard jazz in Korea, is the same situation would happen? Yeah, actually,、uh, I think it's the same situation all over the world. But、uh, but I think、uh, you can negotiate. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's very simple. You can negotiate. Then if they but do, I, they don't, but, they don't. But I'm sure it's different in in Europe. Yeah, maybe just pay a less fee. In Europe, you can just record the giant step or 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 some songs from Miles Davis. I don't know. Ah,、uh, well, I think、uh, maybe in Korea actually it's not so expensive. Yeah, to record、okay. the standard, it's not so expensive because so many, so many Korean jazz musicians record the the standard. With, uh, uh, if it is too expensive, they can do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. More questions. Ah,、uh, here is the question: Social media in China are different, and we cannot access them from friends. How can we get access to Chinese social media for our artists? Maybe. Andy can answer this question. Okay. Yes.、Uh, social media. Yeah. Social media. China is.、Uh, is totally different because we have a digital great wall. So, so if you want to cross the wall, <laughs> you you need a VPN. <laughs> you need a VPN.、Uh, the other way is that you、uh, find a local partner.、Uh, normally, we have the package of.、Uh, Which contain distribution and、uh, online promotion. So if we we have a done deal with a, a French label, 
for digital distribution, like for certain certain years contract. So we can talk about the online uh, online uh, promotion uh, inside the package. Yeah, so we pro provide such kind of uh, service, and already we work with uh, 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 a French label already uh, for this kind of uh, cooperation, like uh, digital distribution plus online music, uh, online promotion. Yes. Okay, uh, Catherine also asked, uh, "What is the um, popular social media in Korea and Japan?" Like Facebook, Instagram, or other other platform. Yeah, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, a Line. Yeah, Line. Those are, okay. Yeah, those are uh, quite popular. But I think um, you know Twitter is very broad, uh, broadly accepted in any generation. But it's it's younger compared to Facebook. So when okay. we promote our festival, like we, you know, kind of see that character of where those uh, medium will address to. So uh, we have what's called a royal customer for uh, our jazz festival, which usually is, you know, the upper uh, generation. So uh, when we try to promote the, the something towards them, we use Facebook more rather than Twitter. But uh, Twitter, I, I guess Twitter works uh, for all generation, but yes. Okay. Uh, well, in Korea, actually, the, the Facebook is uh, get, is uh, getting down. And, and uh, okay. the, the Facebook, yes, Facebook is effective only for the, the, uh, the 40s or 30s. Yeah, actually, it's not for the young generations. And then, okay. uh, the, Yes, like Instagram is very strong. Yeah, mm -hmm. only the the young young generation, 20s, 30s, they they uh, they always use the the Instagram and TikTok is very strong. Yeah, TikTok okay. from China, yeah, which is very okay. strong, but it's only for the elementary uh, students in Korea. Okay, <laughs> okay, it's very, it's very strange situations, but um, so the, at this moment, I think Instagram is the most important SNS in Korea. Instagram, okay, yes, okay. Um, maybe I can answer this question for, for Catherine. Um, in China, we cannot directly link to the Facebook, Instagram, uh, we use WeChat more. And we have our um, own version of social media, like it's called Weibo. Weibo is more like Twitter, but it has more function on it. it. You can upload videos, uh, you can upload uh, pictures, and it's powerful. And a lot of young young people, teenagers, they use Weibo every day. Yeah, maybe it's a a good way to promote music and a lot of friends of mine uh, they from they are independent music musician from Canada or um, US they just learning studying Chinese and just just uh, registered their Weibo account and yeah they have a lot of friends in one minute yeah so if want to promote your music or something, uh, you can use Weibo in China. Yeah, it's a good way. Okay, let's see more questions. What about WeChat in Japan and Korea? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Yeah. Did, did you use WeChat in Japan or Korea? I personally use, but when I'm in Japan, like I, 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 I rarely use. But yeah, I, I have WeChat. Yes. Okay. Okay. Maybe just connect with Chinese people, <laughs> Chinese friend. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Last year we did a project called uh, ABU Song Festival. ABU represents Asia Pacific Broadcasting Union or something. 
and okay. we invited some artists from China. So in order to recruit artists and you know people, think like, yeah, we yeah. use WeChat. And... No. So in Korea we don't have the WeChat. Uh, well, really? Yes. Yeah, so you you can cannot download from the Apple Store. No, we, no, no, no. We can download the WeChat, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, the, uh, yeah, Kakao, Kakao is popular. Yeah, right? yes, yeah, Kakao, Kakao Talk yeah. is the very powerful. Um, yeah. uh, it's like a line in Japan uh, is very powerful. Yeah. So like the, actually the the the, the Korean has very strong one is a Kakao Talk. Yeah, yeah, Kakao yeah. Talk. Yeah. yeah, for for gathering, uh, I just uh point out the question. Uh, we have three different uh tools to connecting people, and in China is WeChat, and uh, in Japan is Line, and in Korea is Kakao Talk. They are also they are all powerful tools, uh, powerful apps, but just different um just, just yeah yeah it, it, it's not about the advantages or this disadvantage nothing about it it's just uh some people like this one and some people like this one yeah okay can, can you can access Weibo from friend i think you can yeah yeah you you can directly just put in the uh web website address and you can direct access to Weibo. I think there is no restrictions to it. Okay. Let's see more questions. Mm. Let's talk about the connection between our three countries. I think that is a good, good question. And oh, um, how can we collaborate ourselves together more? Yeah. Why? Why don't we just have more collaborations? And what's the reason for it for now? Now we we are so close, but we do not have too many collaborations uh even that we 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 have maybe we have more collaboration with us and europe but we are three countries very close to each other but why <laughs> why like we can talk about anything you want, you want yeah uh okay i i start first okay yeah, for jazz music, I think China is still, uh, compared to uh, Korea and Japan, China is still uh, undeveloped. So, for example, like Eric, you work in jazz music. So, jazz festival is, is, is uh, the only J -J jazz music festivals in, in, in Shanghai, even in, in China for long, I mean, for over 10 years, I don't know, Eric. Yeah, so we don't have, we have few jazz festivals actually. So the market is still developed, undeveloped, is still developing. So I think we, in China, we are at the very early stage for jazz music. So at this stage, we need to do a lot of work to, to educate, to promote jazz music. Like, I, I think for, for now it's it's easy it's it's better to do like uh distribution educate the market who uh, who's the best uh, jazz musicians i mean for the very basic things we should do right now and uh, yes for the for the connection with uh korea and the japan we need uh, uh for example we all have big festivals so three three countries can book uh, you know certain french artists through through the agency together so we can share the international fee or yeah we can share the international fee to to to, to book the french artist yes eric yeah i, I agree because um 
the audience they do have do do not have a very good sense of jazz for most of people. So we have to invite some、uh, big names from U.S. for commercial for、um, for the market. Yeah,、uh, I really want to invite the band from Japan and Korea. Yeah, but the market、um, they are still、um, in a underdeveloped. Situation right now, so、um, that's our problems. Yeah, yeah. The jazz in Japan is good. The jazz in Korea is good, but for the Chinese audience, they or like、uh, big stars from U.S. If you invite Jacob Collier, you you sell your ticket just in one minute. Yeah, but you invite a good band from Japan, you have to prom. Do a lot of promotion, yeah. Maybe you need to pay a lot of cost to finish your promotion. So I think it's you have we have a long way to go. Like I said in my presentation yesterday, we lost for sixty years, sixteen sixty years, ah,、uh, since ninety the nineteen thirty to nineteen nineties. So okay, hmm. That's a sad question. Okay, so, um, Shinji and JJ, do you have some ideas for more co- collaboration with our three countries? Okay, I, yeah, because、uh, China, Chinese, China, China has a big market, right?、Um, although the audience, they did. Yes. Yeah, definitely.、Uh, we want to create,、uh, strengthen our network with neighboring countries first. You know, Korea, China, and our our festival former artistic director Atsuko、uh, was always saying like、uh, JJ was given us a lots of advices and in the past, and、um, I just said like if we invite big artists like、uh, to Korea, it sells、uh, by itself. But then, like I,、uh, there are some like big bands, for example, that we want to invite from Europe、uh, that are not that famous but good. So we want to introduce such band to the the, the audience of Japan. And if we take hand in hand,、uh, invite such artists so that the artist, the band, can tour in China, South Korea, and our festival. That's like a you know dream、uh, setup. And I'm sure those artists, emerging artists, would be happy if the schedule allows. And if we could create such a network within、um, Asian countries, we can perhaps、uh, bring those artists to, you know, Pacific countries, Australia,、uh, New Zealand, and vice versa. We can invite artists from those、uh, places. So, yeah,、uh, that that's what I have been always、uh, dreaming of to, you know, create stronger network with neighboring countries first. Okay. Well, I think、uh, I think Asia is too big, you know. So I don't have any special relationships with the West Asia, Saudi Arabia, Iran,、mm. or I don't have any networks, and I mean. The the Southeast Asia is I have some good friends who is working for the jazz and、uh, but but、oh, yeah. it's too far, I, I guess yes. So that means、uh, the China, Japan, and Korea it can be、uh, grouped one it can be one group. Agree. Yes. So we need to, to yes we need to share the the ideas and、uh, we can share the programs and whatever we can do the we should try to whatever we can do that and、uh, and only only、uh, the the only one way to to、uh, to do that is okay let's uh, uh, let's uh, meet、uh, once a week every once a week yes like this. I call you Andy. I call you Eric. Yeah, I can. I, I can yeah, very happy, Andy, yeah. Very, happy very happy to do that. Very happy to do that. Yeah, <laughs> we can have more connection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Totally agree. Yeah. 
So quite a long uh, time ago, yeah, uh, 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 sorry, Eddie. Quite a long time ago, we have a, uh, a, a kind of a, a organization which is called AJF Asian Jazz Festival Organizations. Yeah, yeah. it was around yeah, 15 years ago. And uh, after, the, after organizing the kind of organizations, uh, actually nothing happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, they disappeared automatically and uh, okay. they don't have any kind of committee so yes yeah, so we, we should try at least for, for three countries we can do the very close collaborations yeah i think the first step is we can choose a tool we use together maybe it's wechat or line or ah. Talk. and i can invite my big brother another big brother mr Yen, mm -hmm. to our group and we can yeah have a meeting once a week yeah and i, I will be the go between the, i'm yeah. sorry yeah i will be and the I, go between because i can use both line and you know wechat okay you message me on wechat and i, I lined to <laughs> <JJ>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i will be the hub <laughs> okay that's be great um let's see more questions maybe we we'll just have like 20 minutes for this panel and and for the audience if you have questions you can just type in in the comments and i will ask our guest your question okay let's see from the bottom uh, do you know bandcamp and if yes uh there it is is this used in your country's Bandcamp? Bandcamp. Yeah. In, in China, we do use Bandcamp for independent musicians. Uh, I can answer this question. So how about in Korea, in Japan? Bandcamp it, It's a website from UK. Maybe uh, you can upload your music and and some people can buy your music from the Bandcamp. It's like more like SoundCloud, yeah. Uh, no, we don't have in Korea. Okay, okay. Same situation in Japan, right? Yeah, I've heard of it, but I've never used it. Okay, okay. Maybe just for uh, electric music or other type genre. But a good band is called uh, Bad Band Not Good. Yeah, they just pop, get popular in Bandcamp. Anyway, um, so all, is there a professional network or region media for all of Asia? I think there is not. Just like JJ said, Asia is too big. Uh, Iran is Asia even. Um, yeah, we have a lot of countries, yeah from different different directions yeah well, we have india yeah that that's asia and we have uh afghanistan that's asia so we do not have such a network but i hope one day we can build a network where we use the same language maybe in english or or somewhere else okay let's see what would be the best platform to share music with you ah that's a good question uh if we want to reach some mus music from europe um which is the best platform we use not not uh attachment in email that, that that's where so maybe spotify i don't know if some artists want to share his music to us which is the best platform uh in, in china so things we have totally different yeah. uh, music platforms that foreign people cannot access so basically our foreign partners they use uh uh spotify or youtube to send us uh, the, the music links so we use vpn to visit uh, the 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 website here 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe this is only restriction in China, maybe. Um, I think YouTube is a good way, but some people, um, I can say most of the CEO or in some label, they can use YouTube in China. So I think YouTube or SoundCloud is also you can use. Uh, here's a question for Andy. Uh, being distributed on digital platforms, how can we get on Chinese playlists? Is there a specific playlist for jazz? It's a good question. So I, I just think about that, uh, like for Japan, Korea, China, we three, we can uh, work together on on uh, just social media, maybe, or a playlist with three countries recommending the artist, jazz artist together. So we can put the playlist on, on, on China music platforms to promote the music from French, Korea, and uh, Japan, maybe together. Okay. Yeah, actually, because uh, the the playlist on Chinese uh, music uh, platforms, uh, foreign people cannot visit. So that's a question for them. So, like for example, we are running the uh, what the France um, playlist for Bujo Expo. So we, cause uh, they cannot uh, visit the NetEase platform. So we send back the. Uh, streaming reports every month to, to them to tell them, okay, uh, what's the number, uh, how many listeners uh, for the playlist? Yes. Uh, the data, yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, one more question. Um, let's see. Do you have a strong relations with French embassy? Um, and your company or festivals uh, and is helpful to build a link for French artists tour in your country? Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, embassy. Uh, it's like embassy can help us get more cooperation, get more links. Yes, uh, we have a very, very good uh, uh, connections with the French embassy and French institute and uh, French cultural center, especially called French cultural center. So the, they they always contact me for the promotion of the jazz musicians in Korea, and uh, sometimes they they arrange some opportunities to to invite uh, uh, the Korean local promoters who are uh, festival directors to look around the French jazz scene. And uh, that's why I, uh, I have quite uh, many experience is to work with the French musicians thanks to the, the French embassy and French cultural center. And the uh, uh, only one thing that I cannot understand is uh, uh, that they don't give uh, they don't uh, give me uh, uh, decorations. No, he's kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Uh, actually, so, yes. Uh, the, the, the I think the the French embassy and French cultural center. Uh, would be the one of the best workers, best partners for the the cultural uh, uh, business side. I mean, the, the, they're really nice. Yes. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, I can say the same situation in China. Yeah, you know, we have a good relationship with embassies, and we have a lot of uh, uh, panels like this and other panels with. Um, different countries so yeah they did a, a great job 
Yeah, the the same for Japan. Like uh, in the beginning of this panel, I talked a little bit, but starting in the year two thousand eight, uh, two thousand eight, uh, we did what's called a French Jazz Quarter, which was part of uh, one of the programs for Tokyo Jazz back then, and we did it several years, and we were able to invite you know exchange artists. From uh, France and 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 not not just France uh, from Europe and that, that, that was great and you know like they are introducing diverse artists to us, so um, yeah they're definitely uh, one of the best partners that we have. Okay, um, one more question from YouTube. Um, uh, what about live stream concerts? Yeah. Uh, especially uh, we are under this epidemic COVID-19. So what about live stream concert? Do you think it is a good opportunity for internet, international artists at the moment and how to make the most of it Yeah, for live stream concert? So I can start first. Yeah, please Andy. Yeah. Yeah. So for live streaming uh, in China, we had uh, an explosive growth during the past six months because people, you know, stay at home, nothing to do, watching video, playing games. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, but still, it's a problem that how uh, musicians or companies or labels can make money from from the live streaming. Um, there's no business model yet in China. So also there's a limit on uh, foreign artists live streaming, especially if the foreign musician is not in China. So he, that means he cannot broadcast from outside China. You know, it's a problem. So, yeah. uh, so I don't think it's long term speaking. I don't think it's a useful way, you know, for foreign artists to promote in, in, in China. And especially now here in China, especially in Shanghai, the live house uh, live venue already reopened. So, you know, people is going back to, to, to live events. So fewer and fewer people uh, watching the live streaming on apps. So I don't think, to my opinion, I don't think it worse to do that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I agree. Uh, maybe live stream concert is more uh, suitable for domestic musician, but yeah, it is restricted for international artists. Yes. Unfortunately, yeah. Uh, yes, I totally one hundred percent agree with Andy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Nobody wants to perform on the screen. Yeah. Even the musicians yeah. they really want to meet the audience directly. They, they, they like to communicate directly through the sort of their music. And actually, the music businessman wise, we don't have any models to, to make some business through the, the online, uh, except BTS. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's totally different. <laughs> different. Yeah, we are, yes, we are totally. We are living on a totally different league. Yeah. So yes, with um, actually today, the, tomorrow we're gonna uh, broadcast uh, the the live performance um uh, for my festival. So we have quite a lot of uh the viewers on the on the website, uh, but the uh, world. Well, um, I'm still uh, trying to to survive and for the festival and the world. Uh, I, we are now living in a really really special uh, situations uh, the, the the pandemic situations. So the world, the next, I uh, I can say it uh, after next uh, well next year the, without the the uh, coronavirus. Then I think uh, nobody will gonna play the the, the the streamings. Yeah, they want live. Everybody want live. Yeah. Okay.
Mm, let's see more questions, and maybe we just have five minutes left. And if the audience has some questions, you can answer the gap. You, you can uh, leave a message to us. Let's see. Do you like also for artists to build a local artist? Uh, it's more for uh, the education. Yeah, education, pedagogy, yeah. Um, or professional musicians part. Yeah, uh, maybe this question is, uh, how can we start a collaboration on education? Yeah, because uh, we have a lot of students want to study jazz, uh, to know jazz more, and maybe the friend, French musician, they can give us some uh, lectures. So do you think about it to have more collaboration in education area with French people? Yeah. Maybe Shinji? Yeah. Okay, I will, I will. Yes, I, th I, uh, I think education is really important and, and the, the, uh, the education from the French musician would be good, uh, really nice for the, the, uh, the, the young, young generations who, didn't, who doesn't know about the jazz. Yeah, it's gonna be okay. It could, uh, could, uh, could be a good collaboration. And, and I'd like to add one more thing for the musicians. So I really, really uh, recommend to have some collaborations with uh, the local musicians. I mean, especially for the jazz musicians, they, they should try to find uh, the way to collaborate with the local musicians in China or in Japan, in Korea. Yes, especially in this moment, in this period, I think they are very, they, they, don't, they have nothing to do. They are very boring and they, they want to get some, some, some news from the, 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 the musicians from France, maybe from French musicians. Uh, yeah, you can easily check it out the web uh, YouTube and then yeah, you can you can uh, you can propose some collaborations with the, the musicians you like in on the YouTube. Yeah, maybe it works or it doesn't work. But I think it is one of the best way is to make some collaborations with the local musicians. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, and maybe I I just want to ask a question for the audience. Which which is the best school to learn jazz in French? <laughs> I don't know. Some people they choose go to Berkeley, U.S. Uh, Groningen in Netherlands. But I just want to know which is the best school for learn learn jazz in France. I can say. Okay, we just have. Yeah, CIM, CIM would be good. French school, CIM. Oh, we have a friend from Argentina. Yeah. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. Our panel is more like a streaming session one minute left and maybe the time is up um thanks for our guests thanks to shinji and andy and uh, let's back to you Lizzo. yeah thanks. many thanks to all of you it was really interesting thank you eric thank you chinji andy and of course uh, thank you to the godfather uh, jay jean and uh, all the team of the jarazum jazz festival uh, victor jibay 
Um, for those of you who have registered for the speed meeting session, see you in a moment. And for the rest of you, please join us tomorrow for the Made in France night of the Jara Zoom Jazz Festival with Paul Jarret, Anne Paseo, Vincent Perani, and also the great South Korean singer, Yun Suna. Thank you again to all of you and see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.